Okay, today I'd like to take a look at um, three cases for finding domain. Um, we can take a look at just three different types of functions here, and um, this will pretty much take care of anybody that would be in an Algebra 2 or a pre-calc class. All right, you've got polynomial functions that we deal a lot with, we've got rational functions that we deal with, and we've got square root functions. All right, um, now to first off take a look at the polynomial functions. Um, I've kind of written a little definition here. Polynomial functions of degree 2 or higher have graphs that are smooth and continuous. All right, hopefully you um, realize that. You should be familiar with maybe, say, just a regular um, parabola. All right, smooth and continuous. That would be considered a polynomial function. All right, we've got other polynomial functions in general that could have lots of hills and valleys. All right, something that maybe looks like that, that would be an odd exponent. Leading coefficient would be positive with lots of hills and valleys in there. All right, and then I could even kind of have it be a negative leading coefficient. Even degree might look something along the lines of that. Okay, but those are basically what your polynomial functions look like from a graphing standpoint. All right, if I look at them um, algebraically, I might have something that looks like f of x equals a 3x squared plus a 5x plus 1. That might be one type of scenario. Or um, any type of, really, polynomial curve. Okay, so like g of x, maybe let's get a little bit longer here, like 5x to the third minus 2x squared plus 6x. Okay, now across the board, um, all of these polynomial functions are going to look similar like this. They're going to be smooth and continuous, all right, and they're going to go on forever and ever in both directions. So um, for a polynomial function, um, you can just memorize that the domain, because of the way their graphs look, smooth and continuous, going on forever and ever in both directions, gives you a domain of negative infinity to positive infinity. Um, when written in interval notation, that would also be all reals. Okay, so that takes care of our first category. Okay, now, um, taking a look at your rational functions. If you wanted to um, maybe picture one of those, all right, there's lots of different ways rational functions can look, but just for instance, maybe one might have some vertical asymptotes in it, maybe at negative 2 and positive 2, and then in different parts of the graph, maybe you're going to have some, something that looks similar to this. All right, and again, that's just one little example of what a rational function might look like. Um, as soon as you hear the word rational, you should be thinking, I'm going to see some type of fraction in my actual form. All right, so maybe um, from an algebraic standpoint, we might see f of x is equal to, um, we'll start out with a real simple one here to begin with, a 5x minus 3 over maybe, say, an x plus 6. All right, now, if we're going to focus on the domain here, there's obviously going to be some exclusions. As you can see from the picture here, I would have two exclusions of negative 2 and 2 that would not be in the domain. All right, but when you're looking at it from an algebraic standpoint, you need to really realize that you've got a fraction going on here, and division by 0 is not allowed. Okay, so that denominator cannot equal 0. All right, so let's make that little note. Cannot equal 0. All right, because we can't divide by zero, all right? That's where our exclusions are going to come from. Any value that we put in for x that would make that denominator equal to zero, we're going to have to exclude from our domain, okay? So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to, um, obviously this one's kind of easy, but for a general overall uh, concept here, you're going to take that denominator and you're going to set it equal to zero. So x plus 6 equals zero. Then you're going to solve this, so you'd subtract 6 from both sides x equals negative 6. All right, now that has to be an exclusion. I do not want x being negative 6 because if I put negative 6 back in there, negative 6 plus 6 is going to give me a 0. I would have division by 0. All right, so what this has told me is that this is an exclusion from my domain. Okay, now if you need to picture it on a number line, at this point you can. All right, so on a number line, the only value that's going to make that denominator zero would be a negative six. So I cannot include that negative six. However, any other number on that number line, 
all right, will be fine. I can put other numbers in there and I'm not going to um, have a division by zero. So picturing this, maybe in your mind or actually drawing it out on paper, will help you realize every other number is in this domain. Negative six is the only one that's not. If I am going to then write this domain in interval notation, all right, then I would do this segment and this segment over here. So all values that are in this domain are negative infinity all the way up to negative six, but not including negative six. So I'm gonna do a curvy back bracket because I do not want to include negative six. All right, union. I'm gonna pick up and do this section over here now. Negative six, again, curvy bracket because I'm not including negative six all the way up to all the values up to a positive infinity right there. All right, so in that example, that would be your domain for that rational function right there. All right, now, um, that one was a pretty easy one, and you didn't really need to algebraically set that equal to zero to find that exclusion. Um, let's do another rational function example that maybe is a little bit harder to see. Okay, let's suppose um, that our function was f of x is equal to maybe something like 7x plus 5 over say maybe an x squared minus x minus 6. Okay, now that rational function is going to be a little bit harder to look at. You're not just going to be able to look at that and immediately know what values have to be excluded. All right, so that concept of taking that denominator and setting it equal to zero to find the exclusions is going to be a process. So I'm going to go x squared minus x minus 6. I'm going to set that equal to zero. I'm going to factor it if it can be factored. So x and x, um, looks like this one can be, let's see, a 3 and a 2, negative 3 plus 2. Okay, now you're going to set both those equal to 0. So when I set this equal to 0 and solve, I would get x equal to 3. And when I set this one equal to 0, I would get x equal to negative 2. All right, but now you have to keep in mind, these are the exclusions. So I cannot let x be 3, because if I do, if I plug 3 back in, that denominator is going to go to 0. All right, same thing here. This is an exclusion. X cannot equal negative 2, because if I do, it will let, make that denominator 0. Okay, so now, if we uh, actually want to picture this before we write our domain out here, all right, negative 2 cannot be one of my values. It's got to be one of my exclusions, and 3 has to be one of my exclusions. All right, but those are the only numbers on the number line that will make that 0 that denominator is zero. So that means all of these values over here are fine for my domain. All of these values are fine for the domain. And all of these values are okay to use. Okay, so on this one, writing our domain in interval notation, we would take each section of the number line here. So negative infinity to negative two. All right, union. All right, now all these numbers in the middle, negative two to three, not including so that's why I put open dots on both those. And then these in the last section here, three all the way up to positive infinity. All right, so in a second example there of working a rational function with uh, the denominator being a little more complicated as opposed to just a nice little x minus something or x plus something. All right, so two examples there on your rational functions. All right, now let's take a look at the last category here, square root functions, okay? Now, on this one, I do want to qualify here. Let's um, um, qualify the fact that we are working in the real number system, okay? Because what we want for this is we do not want um, to take square roots of negative numbers, all right, and then have to deal with the i's. So um, finding your domains of your square root functions when you're working in the real number system. All right, um, if you do not know what they look like, all right, just in general, uh, here would be a basic square root function that has just been shifted left to right here. So most square root functions have some type of starting point and then go up and to the right. Okay, so just a really rough sketch there of what a square root function might look like. Um, in an algebraic form, f of x is going to be equal to, say, maybe the square root of, let's go with a 4x plus 16. Okay, so algebraically it would look like this. All right, this is just some random rough sketch of what it might look like. All right, now, like I said, if we're working in this real number system, all right, then we want to make sure that whatever is underneath here must be greater than or equal to zero. All right, so let's put 
must be greater than or equal to zero because I don't want to take square root of a negative number here. All right, so it can be equal to zero, but just not less than zero. Equal to zero, square root of zero is zero, so that's why I say greater than or equal to zero. All right, now, if that's what we've got to figure out what our domain is here, then you're literally going to take whatever's under the square root sign and set it greater than or equal to zero and solve. Okay, so in this case right here, I would take 4x plus 16, and I would go greater than or equal to zero every time because I do not want a negative underneath that square root. Okay, you're going to solve this equation. So subtract 16 from both sides. 4x greater than or equal to negative 16. Divide both sides by 4. x is greater than or equal to negative 4. <clears throat> okay, now that's going to be our domain. That's going to be all the numbers that we can put in there, and we'll still have either zero or a positive number underneath. All right. Now, picturing this, if you want to picture it on a number line, okay, what that's telling me is negative 4, and it says greater than or equal to negative 4. So I can plug in a negative 4. So I want to include the negative 4, and you can do that real quick in your head, plug it back in. 4 times negative 4 is going to be a negative 16, plus 16, that give you a 0, so we're still good there, okay? And then it says x is greater than that, so all of the values that are greater than negative 4 are going to work, okay? And you could do this, you know, pick some number over here, all right, negative 20, maybe negative 6. Well, if I plug in negative 6, I get negative 24, plus 16, it's going to give me a negative number there. However, if I plug in something over here, if I plug in maybe, say, a 5, 4 times 5 is 20, plus 16, it's going to give me a positive number in there, so I'm going to be good to go. All right, so this is all of the values that are going to be in my domain. And if I write that in interval notation for this particular example, I would have um, a negative 4, and it would be a square bracket because I want to include negative 4, and then all the way up to positive infinity. So that would be the domain of how you find a square root function. All right, so four um, quick little examples on how you find um, domain for a polynomial function, a rational function, and a square root function. If you like the video, go ahead and give me a like. And if you're um, enjoying all of my videos, go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you know when I send out a new one. Thanks.